the advisor. <laughs> we are the community advisory board on this camp. We are a board established by the Community Corrections Partnership, known as CCP. Now, I'm going to kind of go through how we're going to introduce things so we can all get comfortable with this. You may stumble a little bit, but don't worry. So far as introductions, me kindly call the roll so that we can establish quorum. Okay. And we'll ask that each member identify your region or, or city of Contra Costa County and how long you have been with us. So let's start, I'll start. Um, I'm Crawford Carpenter, this time going into my third year. And um, I'm in central Contra, Contra Costa County. Uh, let's go. Um, our secretary. I am Lenita Mim, and I am in East County. East County. <laughs> <laughs> Justin. Uh, Justin Van Zerber. I'm in West County. Uh, this is my third month in Cap. I'm Rena Moore. I'm in East County, and this is also my third. Scott Parsons, Central County, and a resident of Morocco. Good morning, everyone. I was with Carter, a East County resident, and this is my third year on cash. Okay. I'm Brenda Lee, West County, and this is my third meeting, so I get to find third month. Oh, no. okay. All right, and our virtual members, can we please start with our esteemed vice chair, Nicole? Hi, everybody. I wish I could be there with you. I'm very sad about it. <laughs> I really am. Um, I am Nicole Green. I am the vice chair. I am reside in East County, and this is my third year. Latanya, please. Latanya Thompson, Contra Costa, and this is my first year serving. Thank you. And, oh, excuse me. Go ahead, please. The area that you live, I interrupted you, Latanya. Contra Costa. Thank you. Reverend Van Hook. Reverend Julius Van Hook here, West County. Thank you. All right, now the next step, what we'll do then, is could we introduce our staff members that happen to be with us? Why don't we do those that are here in person? Could we start with you, please, Monique? Hi, I'm Monique Tate. I'm with the Office of Reentry and Justice. And this other lady in the green sweater. <laughs> hey, <I'm, laughs> my name is Debbie, and I'm uh, the Executive Secretary. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Dedios. I'm the probation fiscal officer. All right, and the lady. Oh, my name is Jennifer Hopper. I'm the director of HR. Oh, perfect. Great to have you with us. All right, then. Now, prior to announcements, which is the uh, next item. Wait a minute. There's nobody talking. Okay, we're, we're fine. We're all good. <laughs> no, you have to excuse me. This is a little, a little strange. That's everybody's in front. Oh, oh. <laughs> and prior to the announcements, uh, we should probably set the table now for our decorum. This is going to be a little different, you know. Yes. Oh, virtually. Okay, they can introduce themselves if they would like. Jana, start with you. Sure, thank you, Jenna Evans, Office of Education, uh, running the reentry program, Game Plan for Success in the three county jails. All right, Christina. Hi, good morning, Cab. This is Christina Jackson, right next door in the ORJ. Great to be here. Okay, and John. <clears throat> Hi, I'm John Dante. Um, I started the Balance Point Foundation. I have multiple houses in Contra Costa County for recovery uh, residents. Oh, so pleased to have the three of you with us. Thank you. Did we? Oh, Patrice. Oh, geez. <laughs> right in the center. Hi, good morning, everyone. Patrice Guillory here with the Office of Reentry and Justice. And just as a quick reminder to the folks in the room, um, as you're speaking, if you can be sure to, um, to speak up 
Um, so that way on our end, we can pick up in the recording and also for uh, those who are joining us virtually can hear you clearly. Thanks. Thank you. Now, after we did that, let's move to the forum here, which is going to be a little different. So bear with me. We're going to go through some steps and hopefully uh, this will help all of us as we move forward. Persons who wish to address the Community Advisory Board during public comment on matters within the jurisdiction. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Let's make sure we've got this. Persons who wish to address the Community Advisory Board during the public comment on matters within jurisdiction of CAM that items that are not on the agenda or wish to comment with respect to an agenda item may comment First of all, in person. So we'll talk to the in person individuals first. And then we'll follow that by via Zoom. And then following that, we'll do those that happen to be on the phone. So those are like the three steps and the three ways we'll try to uh, work through that. Those participating, those uh, participating in person should make public comment when called upon. And again, it's board members first, and then we will talk to the individuals in the public. Those participating via Zoom should indicate they wish to speak by using the raise by hand or raise your hand feature in your Zoom app. And for those of you that are calling in, we should indicate that they wish to speak by pushing star to raise your hand and then star six to unmute on their phone. As a courtesy to others now, all public comments will be limited to two minutes per speaker. If you do need some additional assistance for those of you who are on the outside, contact area code 925-313-4011. A final point. And we want to reemphasize this. We want to hear comments first from board members, followed by staff comments, and then comments from the public at large. Let's move now to announcements. Do we have any announcements from CAF members? Any announcements? Do we have any announcements from staff? <laughs> Make sure we've got everybody covered. Okay. And any announcements from those of you that are in the public at large? Any announcements? Hi. Hi. Jill yes. Ray with Supervisor Anderson Dockery. Um, I just, um, I'm wearing this mask for several weeks, so just a flag. Um, <clears throat> I came in late, so I didn't hear whether that was it, would you care to move closer or are you? I think I, for the benefit of all. For the benefit of all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jill. Okay. Let's pause now a minute and let's review our purpose. That purpose is to advise CCP by assessing the implementation of the county reentry strategic plan. I'm just going to give you maybe three of our responsibilities because there are many. And the three will be today reviewing data on realignment outcomes, offering recommendations for ongoing realignment planning, and advising county agencies regarding programs for implementation in Contra Costa County. Now let's move to the rest of our agenda. Is there any public comment on any item under the jurisdiction of the Community Advisory Board that is not on this agenda? We are now at agenda item number two. I do have. Please. Um, so yesterday I attended the meeting for the Reentry Services Center. Um, and they have an event coming up that they would like for people to attend. It was a really good meeting, a lot of people, um, and I'm trying to find the date. So it's April 29th 
for the art piece. So they're unveiling an art piece. He made a disassembled gun. And so it's, it's going to bring healing to the community. And the second one is July the 28th, which is the reentry Welcome Home Re Resource Fair. And they would like for some of the board members and some of the advisory council to attend those, both of those meetings. And then I'll give my full report in the next meeting. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Any other public comment? Let's go around the room. This is weird having to turn your head like this, <laughs> but we'll get it. Okay, let's now move to those on via Zoom. Any public comment that any of you wish to make? None being seen or heard. We'll move to the next agenda item, item number three. Approval of our record of actions from our January 12th CAB meeting. That's attachment one, pages four through six. And also going forward, my assumption is that you've read these prior to the meeting so that we don't hold our meeting up reading things that have been previously sent. But so if you kindly scan through this time and then the next meetings forward, we'll just go directly and ask for a motion. I would like to make a motion for the record of action. The um, tab meeting that was held Thursday, February 9th. I would like to make a motion to approve one amendment. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Discussion? Discussion first from the board. Discussion next from staff. Discussion next from anybody in the public. None being heard nor seen. Can you call the roll, please? Professor Carpenter? Aye. Manita, uh, Manita Mims? Aye. Ozzie Carter? Aye. Brenda Lee? Aye. Rena Moore? Aye. Scott Person? Aye. Nicole Green? Aye. Latonya Thompson? Aye. And Reverend Van Hill. Aye. And Justin Van Hill. Motion carried. Thank you. Let's move then to the next item on our agenda. That will be item number four. And item number four, we're going to discuss the application of Michelle Peterson. Brenda is kind enough to cover this for us. Uh, Evan is out of town on business. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. I wish Michelle was here. She gave, she really impressed me with her, you know, presentation. I was really, I was truly impressed with her. She is from Central County, which is Alamo. Uh, she's a former firefighter, paramedic, and, and a place in her life where time, it's time to give back. And she has she did describe herself the same way I did as a volunteer junkie because she, <laughs> she's very passionate and she has a can do attitude. Okay, so oh, she, I didn't need that. Sorry, because it's right there. Okay, and she's a gun violence prevention person because she has an 11 year old and she worries about his, his, his safety. Okay, she volunteers with various organizations in Antioch and Richmond. In Antioch, she worked with the Bonafide Sisterhood, which I looked up. Mm -hmm. which is a crisis center that intervenes after violence has occurred. She believes strongly in violent inter interrupters who can assist in breaking the cycles of violence. And she shares the following priorities in this sequence, mental health, housing, and employment. As you can see, she would bring a unique voice to CAP. Based on our review, CAP wholeheartedly recommends Michelle Peterson to be approved as an Austin member of CAP. May we have some comments? And by the way, Brenda, outstanding. Thank you for stepping up. 
are there any other members here from OC East who would like to comment on the discussion with the chef? Yes, yes. Um, I also was uh, quite impressed with um, Shell's interview with OCEC, and I think um, it's kind of exciting as a former first responder to have another one <laughs> of interest. But I think um, what I certainly sense with her is um, she experienced and learned a lot as a first responder, but it didn't damage her. She still cares. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm so pleased and, and looking forward to voting on, on her uh, as a, you know, membership. Yeah. Thank you. Any other members from OCEC first? And we would go to the rest of it that would like to comment. Uh, I happen to have been at that meeting uh, that the OCEC committee uh, had and with the uh, interview, outstanding woman, and she will hopefully bring a different voice aspect, et cetera. And the differences, you know, to me, it's all about differences. If we bring differences to the table, God knows what we can do. So um, any questions now from staff? Let's go around the room. Oh, yes, yes, please do. Oh, no, I was presenting. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, remember now, this is being taped. Be right. <laughs> okay, any questions, Jill? Okay, now let's move then to those on Zoom. Are there any questions for those of you on Zoom? Thank you, none being heard. May we have a motion, please? I have a quick question. Oh, yeah. So, um, I know that we said that we have a large majority of West, so are we prioritizing Central and East? Our situation right now is we still have three vacancies, uh, which are alternates. Okay. So we will take members as they, you know, come. Okay. Yes, if we have, for example, a full, uh, let, let's say we have one vacancy and we have two individuals, then we would give the priority to the individual for the particular county where we are lacking. So that would be our process. Great. Thank you for the question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have another question. Yes, please. Did she um, let us know she wasn't going to be here today? Monique? She did not. But I can say that she was on the town when she met with us. When she that, oh, that's right. She so was maybe gonna... that's the reason. Yeah. She didn't. Yeah, she was on the East Coast taking care of uh, people. Any other questions before we move or a motion? Yeah, and then what would be the process of moving if we have a vacancy on the actual board, moving someone from that alternate position into a regular board member? Is that a subsequent vote or how does that happen? Yes, you, they would move uh, from being an alternate to a permanent voting member. And in the past, what we've done is based on the date of the submission of the application. That kind of determines our priority sequence. However, we have to take that into consideration with participation on your subcommittees, and we want to make sure that we have the balance as best as possible. Uh, yes, ma'am? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, I do have a question. Uh, um, uh, that this person, she comes with a uh, vast amount of experience. I was wondering during the conversation, was there any conversation directed toward the reentry population and her feelings as far as the communities that we primarily deal with? I understand her priorities line up with our objectives as far as mental health and housing and the like. I was concerned about the reentry population. Was there any conversation around that? Scott, sure, that, that's a good uh, question. There was, and uh, well, she doesn't have what I would call a lot of experience in dealing with people in reentry. Um, she certainly had an interest in the right things happening for people that have been incarcerated. So we probed that some, and I think with her gun violence uh, prevention background, 
and some of these other areas that we were identifying earlier by um, Crawford, that uh, we were pretty convinced that uh, she, she had an interest in the right thing happening for people that have been incarcerated and giving them a chance. Uh, and I do remember those words. Now, there was a recording, so I mean, there may be some things I'm missing, but that's the crux of it, at least. I'm just really concerned about the advocacy for the AB one online funding and specifically it's for sure. the entry population. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Good question. Yeah. Well, thank you for the questions. Now, those are questions from the board. Let's go to staff. Any questions from staff? Any questions from those of you on Zoom? All right, then let's call the vote. May we have a motion? That's um, Yeah, yeah, motion. Yes, may we have a motion, please? Or oh, may we have a motion to accept Michelle Peterson as an alternate member of the cast? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll entertain that motion. <laughs> yeah, and, um, that we um, vote on uh, Michelle Peterson uh, from Alamo uh, becoming a um, alternate member of GAP. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Yeah. Any discussion from the board? Discussion from the staff? Discussion from the public at large? Would you call the roll, please, Monique? Crocker? Aye. Nicole Green? Aye. Renita Mims? Aye. Harvey Carter? Aye. Brenda Lee? Aye. Brenda Moore? Aye. Scott Parsons? Aye. Latonya Thompson? Aye. Reverend Julius Van Hook? Aye. And Justin Van Hook? Aye. Motion carried. Someone might want to text Reverend Van Burke. Or is it this way? Um, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next item on the agenda happens to be. Uh, discussing the guidelines for the in-person advisory board meetings. Now, I, I tried to, and I stumbled through it a little bit. I'll do a little better job next time. But there's uh, there are several pages, and maybe Monique and also Patrice, the two of you, can give us some of the highlights, the ifs, the ands, the buts, the do's, and the don'ts of that document. So. Uh, we are here to listen, Monique and Patrice. So I'll jump right on in and um, first say thank you to all of you um, for your flexibility as we are making um, this transition. Uh, we are in fact um, out of the state of emergency, which then uh, means that um, you know guidelines regarding teleconferencing or remote uh, remote appearance for uh, public meetings have now shifted. Um, luckily here within our county, we are allowed a hybrid option, which is what we are providing to um, all of our advisory bodies, but more specifically here at the probation department, we've um, allowed space um, where you all are sitting now uh, for all of our members on CAB uh, to attend in person and then as well as have the technology available so that folks um, from members of the public and also cab members who for whatever reason cannot be there in person um, can join remotely. Um, there's a couple of things that I certainly want to highlight um, that is going to impact uh, the participation of members so that way you guys are really clear on the process and what is expected of you now that we are back um, to in-person meeting. Um, and I'll mostly focus in if you if for those of you in the room that have a copy of the full uh, agenda packet, um, I believe it would be on page 18 um, of your packet. 
I'm going to go through the table there um, and highlight just a couple of things that are of uh, great importance to all of you. And then I'll also share some other details that might be available to you um, with regards to in-person meetings, okay? So the first thing first um, is I'll, I'll really focus in on this um, middle column here um, that relates to AB 2449, just cause and emergency circumstances teleconferencing. Um, this will be available starting January 1st of this year. So obviously we've moved past that um, through the end of 2025. Um, and what this allows for is first that a quorum or any meeting, so in the case of CAP, this is both for the full body meetings as well as the subcommittee meetings, um, in order for the meeting to proceed, we must have a quorum of members in person, okay? So luckily for us, we made, we made that happen today. But in the event in the future, we have folks that are coming in in person and we don't have the full quorum in place, the meeting will not proceed um, and it may likely be canceled. Just so I really wanna emphasize that for our members. So that way we're cognizant of everyone's time because now we're traveling right to different meeting locations. Um, the quorum, uh, excuse me, quorum meets in a single physical location clearly identified on the agenda. So you may have noticed that the agenda packet or the first page of the agenda looks a slightly different now. We have to post the actual location of the in-person meeting as well as the uh, remote, uh, not remote location, but the obviously the Zoom information and things of that nature. So you will be seeing that going forward um, in the agenda packet. So you'll know exactly where to attend in person. And by the way, Though members of the public and, um, um, and staff from any other offices or county agencies that wish to attend, they are welcome to attend in person as well. Those of you that are in the room, you'll see that the door in the back is, um, is open. It will remain open so that members of the public will have access to the meeting should they wish to attend in person. Um, basis for remote appearances. Now, um, because there is such an emphasis in ensuring that membership participation is taking place in person, there are a few qualifications um, or, or requirements that must be met in order to meet, to meet remotely. Um, those two are considered just cause or emergency um, circumstances. Um, so what does just cause mean? Just cause means that in the event um, that it, uh, a member has a situation that takes place or circumstance that takes place that falls within any of these um, limitate or, or uh, circumstances, uh, such as a need to care for a child, parent, grandparent, grandchild, sibling, spouse, or domestic partner, a contagious illness that prevents a member from attending in person, a need related to physical or mental disability that is not otherwise uh, accommodated for, or travel while on official business of the body or another state or local agency um, is considered just cause. In the case of emergency circumstances, um, if anyone is um, experiencing a physical or a family medical emergency that prevents uh, the member from attending in person, that would be considered um, a reason, a, lawful, a permissible reason for them to join remotely. Following, continuing on, you must notify or, or there's some notification and approval requirements related to attending remotely. Um, for the just cause, the member must notify the body, in this case, notify staff um, at the earliest possible opportunity, including at the start of the regular meeting of the need to participate remotely. The member must provide a general description of the circumstances necessitating the re remote appearance the body need not to take action in this case, okay? We do have members who are um, on now remotely who did utilize their just cause um, um, requirement to attend and have notified us in, in, in a, a reasonable amount of time to let us know their circumstance. In the case of emergency circumstances, the member must request um, to appear remotely by including a general description of the need to appear remotely, which need not exceed 20 words and need not include any personal medical information. 
the member must make the request to participate remotely as soon as possible and must take a separate request for each meeting. The body must then take action on the request at the public meeting. So this is slightly different. Um, so in the, in the case of an emergency meeting, um, the member, you know, something happens, but wishes to attend remotely. So that way they don't, or they're not marked absent. Then the body would take action, will take a vote to essentially either agree or disagree, what have you, for allowing that person to uh, participate. If there's insufficient time to include the item on a posted agenda, the body may take action at the beginning of the meeting. Approval must be majority vote, okay? Going on a little bit further, which will be a, a, of a great uh, concern, or, or I shouldn't say concern, but um, is imperative to know, especially for members of public that uh, might be there in the room and virtually. Um, in terms of agenda and public access and comment requirements, uh, we must provide notice and post agendas as, as we would typically do. So you will see, continue to see us posting agendas online. And also we will post agendas at the at physical meeting location. So when you guys were coming into the, uh, uh, into the building, you may have seen a posting of the agenda there. I wanna highlight this because in the event that we have to uh, move our meeting location um, to a separate location, you'll be made aware of that. Members of the public will be made aware of that as well. So they'll know where to, um, where to attend the meeting. Um, and we must also uh, notice how the public may access the meeting and offer comment. And so you'll see Crawford went through in great detail how to uh, make public comment um, during the meeting. The agenda must include an opportunity for all persons to attend and address um, the body via call-in option and internet-based internet service option at, and at the in-person location, which we did today. Um, this does not require that the agency post an agenda at the remote location, um, include the address of the remote location or provide uh, for public access to remote location. The body may not require public comments to be submitted in advance and must allow the public to address the body and comment in real time. So as just a um, kind of point of reference, for all of the uh, excuse me, advisory bodies that are taking place here at the probation department, just to sort of standardize our process, we have um, disabled chat um, and we have um, um, restricted having um, public comment be submitted in advance of the meeting because we want to encourage active participation while they are here. Chat is available should you have any questions directly to myself or any of the co-hosts that are affiliated with this meeting. For example, anything having to do with technical issues you might be dealing with, that way it doesn't disrupt the flow of the meeting that's happening in person, okay? Um, an individual may require to register for public uh, comment before being allowed to comment where the body uses a third-party platform like Zoom for the meeting. And so we cover that um, already today. Um, roll call vote will continue. Um, and then some of these other pieces. Um, I think we are okay on. So those are the primary ones. I would say again, um, when you do have time, um, please be sure to review the county council memo that's attached to this as well as this table. Um, so that way you're pretty clear on um, the process and the requirements that are expected of you. I'll also highlight this that if in the event in the future, um, oh, I forgot to mention, I'm not seeing it here. I believe you're allotted, if, if, so for those of you who join via a just cause, you're allotted twice within a year um, for just cause remote appearance, okay? So just know that. Um, and then if you have not notified the body, in this case by the staff, that you are going to join remotely due to emergency situation or just cause, um, and you join anyway, just know that you're technically will be considered absent. 
Um, you're still welcome to listen in, but you will be marked absent for that meeting, okay? The other piece I uh, want to highlight is that um, our clerk of the board has been super supportive of all of staff um, as we are making this transition. There's a lot of nuances here that we're still trying to work through. Um, and so we're really grateful to the clerk of the board who's uh, readily available to answer any questions. So if you guys have any questions and you send it to us and we're like, we don't know, we're going to pass it over to clerk of the board to be sure that uh, we're following things um, as appropriately. I also want to mention, and I we may have included here, that there are other meeting locations available. Yes, right here. Um, we included this just for your knowledge. So for those of you who wish to attend, and I know we're going to get to a little later in the agenda, um, these external meetings that you wish to participate in, this is a listing of all of the meeting locations for the county advisory bodies that have hybrid capability. So that way for those of you who wanna attend and uh, whether it's to attend them remotely or to be there in person, we have the locations available here. This is also to highlight for you guys that in the event uh, you wish that if this location is not convenient for you and you wish to meet elsewhere, obviously we'll have to do some coordination around that, but we do have other possibilities based on the availability of those new locations, okay? And I think I'll pause there. Um, is there any questions that folks might have or any other nuances that I may have missed um, that folks would like to share at this moment? For those on the line, please be sure to raise your hand and then I will rely on you proper to facilitate if there's any questions there in the room. or comments. Patrice, <clears throat> Patrice, hi. Yes. I just wanted to let you guys know that some of those um, addresses where they're showing that the meetings are taking place have changed, like the Juvenile Justice Coordinating Council will be here at 50 Douglas Drive. So um, some of those are are, like it said, it was downtown, but it's not, it's going to be here. So they might, have, the, the address might have changed. Yeah, and uh, now thank you for calling that out. And as I, my if my memory um, serves me correctly, I believe these might be backup locations for all of the 50 Douglas meetings in the event, because we're still working out the kinks here, but I think we've worked them all out. But So thank you for highlighting that. <laughs> And the only other thing that I would add um, is just- So I'm sorry, is that Jill? We, can, we can't hear you that well. Sorry, I'm local. Um, so uh, 1025 Escobar Street, just so everybody knows, that is the new county administration building. For any of you that are old timers that know 651 Pine, hmm. it's just right across the street. Same location, just 651 Pine is no longer on. Hmm. Uh, John, we have a question from you. Uh, it's it's more of a comment, um, and actually Patrice just kind of referred to it. Uh, for people who are accessing remotely, we don't know who's talking because, quite honestly, we we don't recognize everybody's voice all the time. And on the Zoom screen, it's basically just showing Patrice as the person speaking. So I, I don't know how to resolve that, if it would just be as simple as saying your name before you say something, but that would be kind of time consuming. But just FYI, that's something that's a little difficult to follow. Thank you for the Is there anything else, Patrice, that you would like to present or any other questions before we move on? Nope, that's it on our end. Well, thank you very much. Thank you again. Any other comments, questions, none being seen, heard, etc.? Sorry, I, I forgot to mention one more thing. 
So just to reiterate, all CAP, uh, all CAP meetings and CAP subcommittee meetings will take place here at 50 Douglas. Should in the event that, um, for, especially for the subcommittee members, um, if this meeting location and time is going to be challenging in order to meet um, in person for quorum, please let myself and Monique know um, so that way we could figure out how we can accommodate you all and, and you know make it happen so we can meet quorum um, pretty regularly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Moving now to the next agenda item, which will be agenda item number five. Oh, no, excuse me, number six. We're moving here. And this is we're going to appoint CAB representatives for external meetings. Would you please go to your attachment four? Oh, there it is, page 25 in your book. And you want to walk us through this, Monique, as to where you are with those meetings? Yes. Thank you. So, um, so we have, um, we've been, uh, Gio Ray has been kind enough to provide the report out for the Board of Supervisors. Um, they meet most Tuesdays at 9 a.m. And usually Jill Ray um, or Alicia Robinson will provide that report out. However, CAP members are encouraged to attend as often as they can, but it may be difficult. But um, so thank you, Jill, for that. And then, um, so I just put to be determined on that. And then for the CPP, um, it's quarterly Fridays at 10.30. Uh, I put to be determined for the CAP rep. Usually it's the chair. Just and, put my name down. Okay. Done. Uh, okay. <laughs> And I think um, based on operating guidelines, it says you can, um, it says to attend as many as you can, but so I'll have to check specifics, but um, usually uh, Crawford does a good job of identifying what's going to be on there. And I think many of you have attended the CCP. Oh, I have a question on CCP. Um, on those meetings, can you attend those via Zoom or when you say attend, you mean attend in person? Um, they probably will be held virtually. Oh, oh that's easy. Is that correct, Jill? Or Patrice? No. They will so that those will likely be in person, um, but we'll have a hybrid option so folks could join in um, virtually. So you all do not make up um, the membership of CCP. So you'll technically be considered members of the public. So you could join virtually if you wish. I'll also um, want to highlight that I think is though Crawford is typically in attendance and um, provides presentations to uh, CCP on behalf of CAP, I highly encourage um, that um, you all attend as regularly as you can. Right now, there's not a CCP schedule set, unless Debbie, you've heard anything April new. 7th. April 7th, 10th. I'm sorry? April 7th, 10th. April 7th, okay. Um, so that is a tentative next CCP uh, meeting date. Um, however, though I'm encouraging your participation, if we don't need a majority <laughs> of CAB members attending, Otherwise, we might find ourselves in a bit of a conundrum um, quorum wise. But um, nonetheless, just keep it. We'll always be on the CCP meeting. So um, you can always reach out to us uh, in regards to that. And CCP will definitely be in person because it's a Brown Act mandated body appointed by the Board of Supervisors. Yeah. Have we just, have we heard yet which meeting location? Will it be 50 Douglas or? County Administrator's Office building. Um, I would check with the chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Lisa is the chair. <laughs> I have a question. This is Monique. So, um, with that said, though, based because they aren't part of that body, they can attend hybrid. I mean, virtually, right? Yes, so, that's what I was referencing. That technically they'll be considered like members of the public, so they could attend virtually if they wish. Okay. I have a question. 
As far as um, our CAD requirements, are we still required to attend a specific amount of the CCP meetings as part of our membership as a CAD member? So this is Monique again. To my recollection, we encourage. But I think it does talk about six of the meetings. I think there's a number stipulated in right. the revised guidance. Yes. Yeah. Do your best. Okay, so I'll go to the next one. Um, Council on Homelessness. Um, it's the first Thursday monthly from one to three. That's the last update. And we have Arena, who yeah, he was supposed to be on March 2nd, but he was moved to March 16th. Okay, so I have a happy age. Okay, so March 16th is the meeting. And then uh, Nicole will be um, like an alternate, and she will probably be attending as well, which I'm going to say that you can attend virtually not being part of the body if they have the hybrid option. And I guess they do. And then um, HIP, it's still to be determined. I know Scott is the representative, but I've been in contact with the rep through HIP and they have they don't have their schedule yet. Okay. But she'll keep me abreast on it. Okay. I'll keep you all abreast on that. Mm -hmm. And then for Measure X CAP, um, Ozzy is the representative. Um, Wednesday at five to be determined whether it's going to be monthly or quarterly. I think they were deciding they may change it. So I don't have any updates yet on that. And then the PPC um, is uh, we we need a rep for that um, Monday monthly at ten thirty a.m. And the first Monday. The first Monday. Okay. Yeah. The early day. Okay, so the first Monday monthly, usually at 10.30 a.m. And they probably will have a remote opening. Yeah, all virtual. Yeah. Okay, and so again, you all can attend remotely. However, just like with the CCP, the chair has been the person, and I guess um, maybe one more than six members or or six times or something. I'm not sure the exact language or the operating guidelines, but so Crawford, do you want me to put your name there too? Uh, put a question mark. I have a commitment that I've made on Monday's morning. So. Okay. All right, I'll put a question mark. Right, put a question. <laughs> Maybe I can do an alternate. Yeah. For someone. Fine. Thank you, Chris. Okay. And then um, for our job, which is the racial justice oversight body. Patrice, can you remind me like where we are with the status of their body and their meeting? Yeah, so the um, the nominated um, community-based representative seats were all approved. So we have a tentative date, uh, meeting date for um, March 28th and may get pushed out, but um, and then that one would be at the county administrator's uh, county administration building. Okay. And maybe quarterly, right, Patrice? Yes, those are quarterly. The full body meetings are quarterly. Mm -hmm. Is there a day or all of that's to be determined? Well, yeah, for yeah, for now, like I said, there's a tentative date of March 28th, but it like I said, may get pushed back. Um, but they would, in the past, they've typically been first, what is it, the first Thursday of every, of the quarter, the start of the quarter or the end of the quarter. Um, but due to kind of the delay in approving those, uh, those um, community-based uh, representative seats, it's kind of thrown the meeting schedule off a little bit. So, but we'll keep you posted, at least for now, there's a tentative date um, for March 28th. And I don't think we have a person. Um, or, did you show, share input on our job? I know you did it last year, but I don't think we have someone that identifies that they would be the rep. 
And I think I probably have a question about would they be attending only the quarterly main meeting, not the subcommittee meeting per se, right? Yes, yeah, so for our job, again, this is one of those that you're encouraged to attend, but you don't necessarily have to have a cap member rep representative attending. We're still talking about our job, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I believe in the past, Ozzy was actually attending the data, the data subcommittee, right? Those meetings. Um, so um, if you all wish to have someone assigned um, to either attend specifically the full body meeting or a specific subcommittee meeting, you you know you're welcome to to choose. The subcommittee meetings have not been scheduled yet, um, and those subcommittees are the community engagement and funding subcommittee, data subcommittee, and diversion subcommittee. I'm gonna pull up the hand oh, please. Um, I think. Patrice kind of cleared it for me. I was going to add, well, yeah, she 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 did because she just, um, talked about it from our job because I was going to ask the question of, you know, realistically, how many would you guys like for us to um, attend? Because I know we don't have a lot of names on there, but again, looking at it from our, our lens of it. So she answered it. <laughs> I'm happy to nominate myself to try to attend some of those meetings. Oh, great. I'll um be a, a a backup with him as well. Can I uh, can I ask a question? Is there going is there a place I can find the breakdown of like the subcommittees and things like that, or will we talk about that later? For our job, yeah, yeah. So we have a, our job um, web page. What I could do is I could drop it in the chat for everyone to view. Um, for those of you that are in the room, you just might have to, in, from your own device, you may have to just type it in from what you see on the screen. And then um, for those that's joining virtually, you'll be able to click on the hyperlink. I'll do that now. Patrice, can you give us the list of the three committees again? Sure, it's the Community Engagement and Funding Subcommittee, Diversion Subcommittee, and data subcommittee. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And traditionally those have all been held on Thursday. And those who have been monthly schedules. Um, data <laughs> subcommittee were, were um, kind of been held on a bit of a hiatus until there is some, um, uh, what's the best way to put it? That there's some sort of resolution in regards to um, where or what entity will take on gathering and collecting data and information from various um, from various agencies and do some analysis around that. Um, so that's kind of been a bit on hold. Um, diversion subcommittee was also meeting monthly, um, pretty regularly as well as the community engagement and funding subcommittee, though they were considering possibly moving to every other more um, schedule. Any other no. comments, no. questions? Yes. So the Reentry Success Center Steering Committee so Lanita is the representative and Evan is the alternate. And they did meet um, yesterday. I attended um, on behalf of Laura J. that Lanita attended yesterday's event. She, as she stated earlier, she'll do a full report out next month. But she provided the dates for their event. And then for QUAC, the Quality Assurance Committee, um, Nicole will be the representative. And they will be meeting on Tuesday, quarterly, February, May, August, and November. And I think that February was canceled. So we can anticipate um, them having a meeting in May from 3 to 4.30. Do we know what day that is again in May? I was trying to, I know it was, yeah, February where it was canceled. I was trying to see what day that is on May. I'm not sure if they have a cadence, but first, 
you know, Patrice, I know. I'll, I'll have to check in with Denise, but I don't think it's been scheduled yet. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. And then just a process question. Do we use the same report for the subcommittees that we do? Yes, you do use that same external template. So we have everyone covered for okay. the Fine. That's okay. the first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll take it. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions? We don't want to rush. Any other questions prior to moving to the next agenda item? Any questions or concerns, observations, et cetera? Oh, let me look at the screens. Yeah, I look, I'm looking around the room. Okay, anything on the screen there? Nothing. All right. Okay, let's move to the next agenda item, which is agenda item number seven. And this is uh, what we have to call a put your thinking cap on. And what we're trying to do here is to discuss possible mentorship opportunities for our current members. And the main point here is or we want to be asking this group this body what do you feel is needed to either get or remain engaged so we're throwing I'm, you know we're kind of throwing that question out to the group because in the past what's happened we'll see the initial First, uh, thrust and rush, and then things kind of tail off at the end. So, looking for ideas from this group on how do we keep ourselves engaged? So, that's the question. Looking for ideas. Anyone? What do you think as a group we need to do? Okay, well, let me start with this and I'll comment at the end. Uh, you're going to be hearing once a month from myself, from uh, Lanika, and from Nicole. You're going to be getting phone calls from them. Now, we did this so that we are sensitive and in accordance with the Brown Act. So, uh, we'll be contacting you. So, each of us will be calling four people. We don't want the conversation to go more than five minutes. Because if it goes more than five minutes, uh, uh, no, we're getting too old for that. We may lose our, uh, uh, what is it, our attention span. But if it goes five, six minutes, all we want to know is, how are you doing here at CAD? How are you doing? And then, what can we do better? Because unless we critique ourselves, we'll become complacent. So we have to critique ourselves. What can we do better? So I want to throw that to you. And... Again, can I ask the question again on mentorship? I mean, for example, uh, Brenda and I have to meet. Uh, we're going to try to with Evan. If we can't pin Evan down, then we're just going to have coffee at McDonald's. And Brenda is going to pay for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> More ways than you know. Yeah. And, 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 and now, now, here's the here. That once we have that, as when we met someplace when the Nita first came on board, I said, you know, no, but she's buying it up, she's gonna pick up the face on stuff. <laughs> so she picked up the face. Oh, yeah, okay, that's good. But so and I was able to meet with Terry Dunn. We had a great time. I was able to meet with uh Scott here. I have no problem with trying to meet with you, but it just can't be me. I mean, we got to do something so that we are engaged. We don't want to me, we want to we. So in order to pull this off, now, Brenda and I are going to do our thing. And now, Justin, 
we got to get with you, or maybe I got to get you with Scott, or you with Nicole, or you with, uh, wait a minute, the, the leader, no, no got to be careful because of the committees you serve on. Yeah, yeah, you know, we want to make sure that, that we are uh, in compliance with the Brown Act. And uh, Ozzy, you and I are kind of at the hip because we came in together. You and I haven't even sat down. But, but we got to do it ourselves. So how do we mentor each other? That's the question. Because, you know, we got to get to know each other a little better. And we may tweak some things and say, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I can do A, B, and C. Never even thought of that. So why don't we leave it alone? But uh, we'll call that a, you know, pique your curiosity. <laughs> we'll ask again next week. And don't, please don't say that they, what was the dog on it? Michael Pitts used to say, the dog ate my homework. <laughs> so please don't say that. So please don't say that next week. Be ready next week. Go ahead, Scott. So I think that's a legitimate question that you put out. And I'm also not totally shocked by the silence because of that process. A little bit and think, okay, wow, that's a big question. Yeah. The dynamic now that we're in person is really different and I think may end up solving some of that because I feel a connection already with some of you that as much as Zoom played an important role, I don't think it would ever fill the role of people meeting in person and developing that connection. So it could be that this question will be a big okay in, in a month or two because we're going to start to get used to meetings in person and establish those relationships and Crawford, i think it goes back to when you sign up you know what you're signing up for and the commitment right i've been big on commitment since i came that was one of my questions in my application do we have a working board and so i think that when you are filling out your application and then you go through your interview and then we elect you on. I think that's when it kicks in. When you get elected on, it's a part of what your commitment has been. So I just want to keep going back to that. All right, good. And uh, with that, any other comments? Uh, oh, excuse me, John, stop coming. I'll keep looking at the screen. Uh, no worries, no worries. Uh, just to give you a little background, my career is in technology, and it spanned multiple decades. And project management was a part of it, small part of it. Um, I basically went from end to end in technology. Developing software is one thing. Developing a product or a project is very, very similar. And there are methodologies, there are processes, um, that can be utilized, and there are tools that can be utilized that would help tremendously in this effort. Um, it's a little complicated to explain, but basically, at a very, very high level, you pick your, your objectives, uh, your goals and objectives, you do some definition work, the definition work ties to metrics, the metrics ties to project tasks, and then at the very end, it all ties together. And you basically see if the person requesting the project got what they expected from the person building the project. I don't know if that made sense, but that's that's basically it. I literally taught a class on this and it took several days. So it's not something that can really be coming across in five minutes, but um i've there are people that can do this just fyi well john since you raised your hand <laughs> this is such a pleasure might you come to one of our meetings and maybe chat with us for about 15 20 minutes on how we do that yeah, absolutely absolutely right. i can okay. even put together a couple of slides real quick for it to help it go a little smoother oh great that would be appreciated. And you have John's contact information. Um, I don't think so, but um, John, you can email me at uh, monique.tate uh, 
um, at org dot c c c o u n t y dot u s. And I'll make sure that. Did you get that, John? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. um, you said Monique dot Tate. Yes. So M O N I Q U E dot T as in Tom Tate T A T E mm -hmm. at O R J. Oh, Patrice, can you put my email in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my, oh, my Debbie here, they have been wonderful. Thank you for attending. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, John, keep raising your hand. We may have some other assignments. Really appreciate it. Thank you. If I can help. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any other comments prior to moving to the next item? We want to stay focused on the on our agenda. Any more comments on item number seven, mentorship? I think we kind of beat that up a little bit. All right, let's move then to the next item. That's item number eight, discuss planning for future CAB leadership. Probably uh, one of the most important things in any organization is succession planning. And in succession planning, you got to figure out how do you put some bodies in the right spot how do you expose people so that when that next challenge comes, hopefully they can step up? Many of us are in positions where we don't really get prepared. <laughs> so what I would like to do is take a look at any of the members that are currently here. For example, Ozzy and I will be leaving. Uh, we've got, what is it, we've got nine more months, it's over for us. But the key is, if we want to continue the work, and if the work's important, we are going to have to have other individuals here being able to step up. And with that in mind, uh, for example, Nicole and I have become kind of good working partners. We talk on weekends. We talk when she's driving her car. Um, I'm trying to get her number when she goes on vacation, but she won't do <laughs> that. But hey, we'll, we'll get that eventually. But because of that, we're able to do certain things. She's working on a document for policy and budget where we've got something scripted out where together we were able. Well, we get that when we start working together. And, you know, I just go around the room. Brenda, we would love for you to think about leadership. I go to you, to Bonita, uh, Justin, <laughs> and Lorena, uh -huh. Scott, you stepped up previously, but that doesn't mean you're finished. And so that's the type of thing that I'm, that, that, that you know, from my vantage point, you know, what is it? It's not right until you pass it on. So we want to make sure we're passing things on. And for example, we need people to be prepped to be our next secretary. So guess what, Anita? It, it could be over. It, it can be. Yeah, but that means you gotta <laughs> yeah, got do more on the other end. Okay. And then Brenda. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so please reach out to Nicole, to me, and to Lanita, because what, what we need to do is get you involved. And it could be as simple as come join us when we put the agenda planning together. Come join us when when there's another committee meeting or visit another committee uh, as, uh, you know, uh, you know, as a uh, participant and one of us will meet you there. We want to get you ready so that this board continues. So enough being said, any comments? Okay, next item. Item number nine on our agenda. Scott. Yeah. Any updates? Yes. Okay. In fact, I do have an update. I uh, 
I talked with the Assistant Sheriff Tom Chalk on Monday about this. Uh, his command had changed, so he's now in a different um, area of the agency, but um, Assistant Sheriff Simpkins, who also was on the CCP, yes, is supposed to be reaching out to me. He wasn't um, in his office on Monday. I haven't heard from him. He may be off this week, and I'm going to keep that connection going. Okay. And, and the only thing I'd like to float uh, before I talk with him is we need to kind of determine what, what is it we want to achieve with a tour. I think we've decided, right, that a meeting there would be have some logistic difficulties. Yes. But a tour of, you know, one of the facilities or more, um, you know, there's three distinct facilities that are very different than each other. Um, and it's probably, you know, we should discuss that at some point. What is it we want to achieve? Um, and I think West County is the one that I, uh, well, I've actually visited all three in the last three or four years. There's a lot that they're working on that we're not aware of. Uh, the average citizen that isn't uh, at the jail, either as an employee or being incarcerated, how would you know? Um, so I think it's very valuable for us to have one of these tours. Um, I'm going to be curious what it is we want to achieve, and that may fit the facility in question. So um, I just float that. Okay. First off, excellent. Um, Nicole, your hand is up. Uh, yeah, I was just going to add some note because you know, you know, you guys are working here. <laughs> so. Um, when you ask one of the, the facilities that may be easier for us to get into is West County Martinez may be a little bit difficult. Um, could definitely tell you that. Um, and if he doesn't get back to us, I mean, you could definitely, outside of me being here, Monique knows how to get in contact with, with our area um, to kind of help as well if needed, if he doesn't respond to you. But um, just some feedback I had got from um, inside, West County may be the easiest place they, uh, where they could set room for us to kind of do a tour and uh, versus Martinez. Excellent. Um, you know, question, you said, what do we want to get out of this? Yeah. I think we talked about education. So maybe, and, and I'll float this one. What, you know, when we're touring, what, 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 what is the facility doing to educate those that happen to be? Right. Okay, education, what are they doing? And that's one. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to ask a question um, to you guys as well as uh, Patrice, and maybe it's far fetched. So when you say what do we want to do, and you made me think about our um, rec like our recommendations, right? So inside of here, you have AOD, you have mental health, you have the schools. What is it that you want to see? Do you want to see kind of figure out what is our process? We want to see what happens from when they get in. How do they? How does all the departments work together? How do they connect on the outside? You know, maybe those are some things that we want to think about because the same things that are on the outside are presented in as well, not all of them, but <laughs> are, are here as well. So when we do our tour, what is it that we want to look at? Like there's classrooms in here, they teach in here, there's certain schedules for that. Is it a class? You know, I don't know how far I have to ask my lead, but there's classroom settings in here. What information do we want to gather from um, from our perspective, what is what information is good for us? Um, now I'm putting my research brain, <laughs> project management brain, but those are things I'm thinking of. Like what our recommendations, that some of that stuff is is here in the inside. That's my piece. Yeah, I was thinking about how she just put that together. Um, so, like, what kind of programs for our program committee? We look at the kind of programs they have for our outreach committee. Look at what kind of research. Or what kind of uh, reentry outreach we could do, or for our policy and funding committee, like how much does all that cost? Like, how do you put the three components that we have? How do we look at how they match, how they line up? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Also, um, how the inmates are utilizing services that are being provided mm -hmm. to equip them for reentry. Yeah. Also. Uh, any of their programs uh, restore the justice center while they're incarcerated. These are all really good comments, and I think we could have a very valuable visit 
Uh, the format that I'm kind of used to is that we meet with our command staff of the facility, we float our questions, our concerns, our thoughts, and then they kind of shape the tour around some of that so that we maximize that visit. Okay. Can I um, recommend maybe um, AO, maybe AOD and then, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting feedback as I'm talking to y'all too. <laughs> So, but AO, maybe AOD and uh, GPS, Game Plan for Success, do another presentation because um, you probably won't get into the schools or um, we have an AOD person that sits in the office, but you won't be able to get like into medical. So they'll give you like a brief tour, but you won't actually get into the places that will answer our questions regarding our recommendations. But AOD can do, uh, go Patrice, <laughs> jump in. <laughs> no, I was, I, uh, so, so the only suggestion I, I would make is um, maybe uh, Scott, um, and I can give you the contact um, or, or do an intro, is um, um, contacting Jody uh, Sikaneter. Um, and if you guys, if you want, you can share with her what your idea ideas are. You can certainly eat, speak with her and or connect with her and um, Assistant Sheriff um, Simpkins. Um, and then... Um, She'll probably be the best to um, share which programs in real time you probably have an opportunity to see, or at the very least, um, arrange to meet with uh, the staff within those respective areas um, that Nicole is mentioning, like AODS and things like that. Um, so that way, a whole maybe a day or half a day is planned out for your tour. Um, and they could start doing some brainstorming around how they can make that happen. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry, whoever's speaking in the room, we can barely hear you. That was Ozzy. Go ahead. What was your question? The question was, is there any possibility of speaking with any of the residents, the inmates? That, that, yeah, again, that would probably have to be a question for um, Jody or Assistant Simpkins. Uh, well, I'm sure. Sim Assistant Sheriff Simpkins, too many S's. <laughs> I can tell you that that's not allowed. I've done tours and multiple tours, and it's not allowed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, Scott, you've got your. You know, this is, I, I do That's the one I was told about. No, you can have it. Oh, you can have it. Oh, you can have it. Oh, you can have it. <laughs> you know, this is much better than so, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I think this is awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, just oh. a heads up that the if you're having side conversations, we're and if you wanted us to hear it, we're we're it's muffled, so please right, be sure to. Side conversations will will not come clear in the um in the audio. Okay, and you have a hand raised by Jenna. Jenna, you're we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I might make a suggestion to um typically when they do tours through here, they're very uh they're very quick um and very guided. Um, but if you have a few members that would like to get clearance and uh, join me and come into a classroom or two at West County, I could probably make that happen um, for a small handful of people um, separate from a tour. Like if you want to come in and see a classroom and ask some students some questions, the school inside could possibly make that happen for you for a small group of people. But that would be separate from any tour that you guys are working on with Jody and Simpkins. Understand. Thank you so much, Jenna. Uh, Monique, would you write that down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have it documented. For her. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
would it hard be would it be hard to get clearance if someone has been formally incarcerated? Yeah, yeah. So if I were to get it over Depend, depending on the charge. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go to are we ready? No, wait a minute. Any other questions here for Scott before we move to the next spot? There, agenda <laughs> item. Okay, we've got your list, Scott. All right, moving, moving to the next item. We're getting there. Item number 10. Discuss the updated revisions to our guidelines. What's the update? If they've been so, submitted. This is Monique. Um, so yeah, we want to try to say who we are to John made up. Okay. So when we're talking, um, identify yourself. So this is Monique. So um I'm still in contact with County Council and they've given me a list of uh, things that they're requesting. So I think part of it is that the person assigned to us, he was out, and so we were utilizing another person, and now our person is back. So he really needs uh, clarifying questions about what the, what we are asked for, right? Okay. And I think what I might suggest is that this can continue to be on the agenda, but I, I think what I would suggest is um, either assigning this to a subcommittee or bringing it to the full body and kind of going over it again, just like we did the last time. So we can be very clear. Does that make sense, Patrice? Be very clear about what the ask is because there may be other updates. What do you think, Patrice? So in the past, um, CAP has had like an ad hoc working group. Um, they, they're still subject to um, um, Brown Act rule uh, regulations. So that is a, a, a recommendation that I would offer is that if there are various members who would like to come together on an ad hoc basis and kind of go through it, um, that means you, you're only gonna meet a couple of times and um, to, to work through whatever those revisions are or whatever those recommendations might be from county council, and then can present it to the full body to vote and approve, and um, then that ad hoc group would disband. Okay, and this is Monique again. So um, I think that's a great idea. I was thinking about that as an ad hoc committee, but I wonder if we need to also include some of this new policy about the remote and uh, teleconferencing. I don't know if any of that needs to be updated as regard regarding like the attendance and how I'm not sure. I just thought of that. So I guess that's something we can think about if that needs to be added to the operating guideline. Maybe not, maybe I don't know. We'll see. Hey, may I comment on the ad hoc committee? Uh, I served on that when I first came here, mm -hmm. nothing got done. Mm -hmm. So that's why this other guy and I just said, hey, look, Joe, Bill, we're going to do this together. We weren't on the same committee and we presented something to the general body. And we're going to have, you know, I'm concerned about the Brown Act. You start stumbling over each other with the Brown Act and people didn't show up. I know one or two of us showed up every meeting and the other people didn't show up. And it, it, it turned into kind of a waste of time, but um, you know, maybe that'll be the next step. You know, maybe I don't object to looking at uh, looking at it with one other member here on the board, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back and give give our feedback, and then we can present that to this board. Because if we start fooling around with committees, we'll be doing this you know, September, October, November. Trust me. It won't get done. Versus Ozzy, I know you'll be glad to help me with this one. Thank you. See, so, 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 okay, so if you can get that information to me, to Ozzy, we'll get it done, and then we'll come back to you, and then we'll present it to the board. How's that? With uh, naturally you and uh, Patrice, your conference, and then we, yeah, I think that'll move it along a little faster. Okay, thank you. So one thing I do want to make clear, this is Monique again, is that. He asked me, the county council person asked me, had we implemented uh, the changes? We have not implemented the changes because it was related to form, the pro tem. Yeah. So we, this is a discussion that we keep having to prevent us 
from, you know, meeting, uh, canceling meetings, right? Yeah. So that's kind of like the main thing. And I think that we've been doing a really good job at not canceling meetings, but we still want to clean up the operating guidelines for, like you say, succession planning, right? So yes. for the next leadership, we want to continue the work so that the work can be done in the yes. meeting. So, yeah. And we don't want to drag it from one year to the next year to right, the next year. Right. Okay. okay. All right. And write Ozzy's name down. <laughs> I sure will. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll do lunch. You're <laughs> paying now. <laughs> no, I don't have a wallet. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so you brought us up to date on those guidelines. Okay. Correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Can we now move to item number 11? And that's the reports from our subcommittees and external meetings. So why don't we start with and uh, Jill? She's so kind to be with us. Can you give us any money for the money? You probably won't be able to see me, but can you hear me now, Patrick? Okay. Yes. Um, February twenty eighth, the Board of Supervisors um, did a couple of different proclamations. They recognized Black History Month and the Day of Ukrainian Solidarity. They received a report from um, the Employment and Human Services Department on the Workforce Development Services. So that's available if anybody wants to see it. There's a PowerPoint presentation of all the things they offer. Um, March 7th, um, it's this week, they proclaimed and recognized Women's History Month and Prescription Drug Awareness Month. And um, on the agenda is item C58. And that was a yearly report accepted on the inmate welfare fund. So if anybody's interested to see where that money goes and, and what kind of money is in that account, they can go look at C58 at Tuesday's board meeting agenda. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Jill. Next item on the agenda, outreach and community engagement. Brenda, you're up. Okay. Um, we had our meeting February 21st. And then roll call by Evans and all old, old CEC members are present. The motion is approved. Okay, we, inter we interviewed Michelle Peterson. It was an informal, a very, it was informal, but a very informative meeting. She she brought quite a few things, you know, to, to our attention that we had thought about, like, you know, the, the violent prevention, because she's concerned about her, her child. And then I just read last night that we had our first uh, okay. slide in Richmond. Yes, yesterday. Oh, I think it was 11 o'clock in the morning anyway. So I thought of her, you know, when I when I got that report because when she talked about the interrupters, you know, and I'm hoping someone would go and talk to the victim's families and the victim, but I'm not sure. So I'm, I'm going to check into that. That's fine. <laughs> That's a sidebar. Okay. Then we continue to work on the 2023 work plan. So I'm assuming everyone had a copy of the work plan that uh, we've been working on and that uh, task two and three were the two that we spent a lot of time on. And we did a discussion on the structured onboarding program for applicants to have. And Anne we wanted to add a faith-based organization added as a tentative pool for new CAP members. I wasn't quite sure about that. I thought we just were going to put them on our list, but I'm assuming we're looking for faith-based uh, uh, members like Van Hook. I think he's the one that we have. Right? Um, in fact, Reverend Van Hook is to assist with contacting faith-based organizations for data on contacts. Uh, Crawford presented CAP. CAP felt the future, the culture of CAP should begin with OE. OCEC, and also how to address curtailing revolving door of commit, committee members and mentoring techniques, which we have talked about today. Then, okay, our next step, Scott and Evan are to draft task number six, the work plan on membership, cultivation, grouping onboarding plan for new and existing members, and Monique is to work on updating the mailing list, which is BOS, the mayor, the state official, and faith-based organizations for assistance. And Crawford, you to help them on developing criteria for invest ambassadorship program. And that's my report. 
Thank you. And again, thank you because you stepped in at the last minute to do this for us. So we thank you. And see, now, here's a way we're preparing you for future leadership. <laughs> and do I just love the way he approached oh, yeah. <laughs> Black box is everything. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's move back to the next <laughs> to the next report. Programs and services, please. Yes, this is Ozzy Carter, and our program and services subcommittee met on Thursday, February the sixteenth, between the hours of eleven a.m. to twelve thirty. Our first item was a discussion of our uh, in-person meetings, which we are here. Uh, we also reviewed the Contra Costa County AB one hundred and nine provider survey findings, and we discussed mm -hmm. items to add. We actually had some uh, verbiage changes. Uh, uh, Jill was very, Jill Ray was very helpful in, in orchestrating that. Um, we also did some discussion of surveying individuals that are in custody in the county's three jails to better understand their needs. And we also brainstormed some of those survey questions based on the recent CAB and CEO survey questions. We concluded, well, we discussed types of housing services that were missing from AB 109 funding, such as housing options for individuals with mental diagnosis. And we're looking into Measure X funds as a possibility for funding more housing for the reentry population. And our next step, steps include updating survey questions with ideas that we developed at our meeting, that meeting, and also to go over a list of questions to survey jail populations that we are discussing at our meetings. And that is our report. Thank you. All right, Nicole, you're up. All right, thank you. Um, so, I um, want to give you the highlights from our um, policy and budget, excuse me, policy and budget subcommittee from February. So some of the highlights, um, Jill Way provided an update of an in-person of, of in-person meetings, excuse me, for all the um, advisory and, B, and boss meetings starting March 1st, 2023. Um, just we had a great conversation um, in our last meeting. Justin re inquired about available meeting space that may be used. Um, we also reviewed the CAP recommendations on how funds um, and excess funds will be utilized for AB 109, and we recommended an increase and recommend. Excuse me. We also looked at the recommendations to increase in funding for housing, behavioral health, employment, pre-release, and engagement. Um, to ensure the funding to the group's most needs. Uh, we also reviewed and discussed the AB 109 Public Safety Realignment Program. And we updated our work plan. I um, was really ex excited about our work plan discussion. Um, we, as Crawford said, I'm working on a document um, that I'm going to work with the, uh, the rest of the subcommittee members um, in reference to putting a uh, process together, our documents for those that may come after, you know, when we leave. Um, working with individuals around our recommendations. So those uh, programs within the, the community for housing and behavioral health and employment and um, uh, putting together like a, a call or a guideline or a script um, to gather information in reference to our recommendations um, uh, from full cap to them on how excess funds or funding should be used based on the survey from the uh, programs and services. Our next steps will be to create a document for talking points on work plan, um, to vote on our 2023 work plan, and to send um, a copy of the, and also to, to look at a copy of the survey and to add to our next um, agenda for March. So those are some key highlights from our next call. I'm very excited about our March conversation. Thank you. Or our next meeting, sorry, is March 17th. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Are, are there any questions for our committee presentations prior to our journey? Are there any questions, be it OCEC, be it um, programs and services, be it policy and budget? Just any questions for we're, we're, we're heading down that path now. Good shape. Any, oh, yes, Chloe. So I just wanted to make a comment. Um, if John is still on the call, 
I see uh, Debbie was graciously uh, kind enough to let me know that his email is referenced in his title. So if that is his email, I can reach out to John as well. It is. It is. Okay. It so is. John, I, I can reach out to you as well. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Let's go around. Uh, anybody on the Zoom calls? Anybody in the room? Okay. Well, we've completed our first meeting here, and uh, this has been different. And Prophet, sorry, interrupt. John has his hand raised. Oh, yes, John. I, I was just going to uh, ask a question in regards to this data subcommittee. Um, Obviously, data is a large part of what I used to do. Um, I'm just curious what it is they're trying to do. It sounded like you're trying to get data from various sources and then probably do some kind of normalization so that you can use it in queries and things like that. Is that what you're trying to do? Are you referring to their pro so for CAB, there's a program and services subcommittee um, that um, and from our office, um, with our support, um, we administer a survey to the um, to the county agencies and community-based service providers that are receiving AB 109 funding, and then we utilize the information from that um, to help shape um, ongoing policy recommendations or budget uh, yeah. recommendations uh, to the CCP. Okay. So that's what. Yeah. So when you're now, saying data subcommittee. That's basically what it's doing. Yeah, well, that's the element of, of data that they are, are referring to. There, yeah. there are other data subcommittees that we referenced earlier that are uh, subcommittees of other um, uh, uh, advisory bodies that have some linkage uh, to CAB. So, for example, the Racial Justice Oversight Body has a data subcommittee. Okay. So, but they're looking at something totally different. Yeah. Just curious about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Any other questions? We'll do it again. Are we in good shape? Well, okay, no problem. Well, again here, I want to share that uh, Lanita and Nicole and I have talked, and we're in accordance with the Brown Act, sure. And we're going to do our best to hold those calls to seven minutes or less. We'll even try for six, but be ready for them. And again, how are we doing and what can we do better? Um, I think the thing we, we should conclude this particular meeting is that Nicole, Lanita, and me, that we very much appreciate the time commitment of those of you that are here, and particularly those of you that went out of your way on, on Zoom because you had some extenuating circumstances, but by George, you're still here. So hey, we are making progress. And let's all remember that without each of you here, we're unable to serve the vulnerable population of those returning citizens that we represent. And without any other comments, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you all.